Well, it's time now for perspective. This year's Black Lives Matter protests sent ripples around the world, not least in Australia, a country still grappling with the legacy of its historic subjugation of its Aboriginal minority. My guest today is Greta Mortan Alenge, director of the Black Australia Film Festival, an online festival based here in Paris that aims to provide a space for some of Australia's most marginalised voices. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us on France 24 today. Could you start by just giving me an idea of what first inspired you to set up this festival? Um, yes, well, firstly, thank you for, for inviting me on your platform. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I'm delighted to be speaking in English as well. I'd actually prepared in French, so it's... <laughs> um, I uh, started this festival um, in Paris in 2016. I'd been living in, in Paris for a number of years already and I'd really um, kind of noticed just what a, a lack of uh, representation of um, Indigenous Australian cinema there was in, in France and in Europe in general. Um, and that surprised me because it's a cinema that's really been... Uh, Presented at prestigious film festivals such as Cannes, where films like Samson and Delilah won the uh, Uncertain Regard Award in 2009 uh, for director Warwick Thornton. Um, Tracy Moffat um, had been selected in Cannes um, as far back as 1989 for a short film of hers, and then again um, a bit later with her first feature, Bedevil. So there really was this sort of recognition of Aboriginal cine cinema being really something um, quite extraordinary, um, yet there was no festival dedicated to to that voice. So I decided to um, start a festival in Paris. And in recent years, what has the reception been like to this festival? Is it what you were expecting? Yes, well, the Festival of Indigenous Australian Cinema has been um, really well received. We were obviously very unsure about um, how many people were going to come. There's a very big uh, following of Aboriginal art, obviously, in Europe. That's something that's been present on the international uh, seen for a number of years. So this was um, quite a sort of pioneering expedition, I would say, to, to actually launch a cinema. Um, people would say, oh, that's very niche, but I don't think Aboriginal cinema is niche at all. I think it's something that um, basically is very... Um, uh, what uh, the art, uh, the overall artistic expression of uh, Indigenous culture, which is extremely rich and goes back more than 50,000 years. Now, your festival features, of course, films by Aboriginal fi filmmakers, or at least uh, films uh, where Aboriginal uh, people had a, a starring role in the production. What, in your opinion, are the main differences between the stories told in these films and the stories told about Aboriginal people in films by other directors, white, white directors, for example? Yes, well, I think that's that's a very, very good point and a very pertinent point that you're making. Um, I think we all have to ask ourselves as as artists or as filmmakers or as writers, whose story are we actually telling? Um, I think, you know, I'm a great believer that anyone can tell anyone's story, but I think when a culture has been uh, dominated um, for a very long time, then it is very important that we do ask ourselves that question, whose story are we telling and is it actually about time that we let the people whose stories we want to tell tell those stories? So um, I think what we've got is a is a, a vision that's very specific to um, First Nations Australia uh, with these films it can, as I said, only really be told by those protagonists. So it is a kind of uh, renaissance in a way, but it's also a shift in, in power because the camera is a very powerful tool and has enabled, I think, a lot of truth-telling to come out. And this may be a little bit like asking you to choose between your babies, but is there any one film that's part of this festival that you're particularly excited about showing? Well, this year, I mean, it's a very sort of different festival in the sense we um, had planned to um, celebrate our five years this year. And unfortunately, because of... Um, the restrictions and the closure of cinemas in Paris itself. Um, we were unable to do that. We did wait as late as possible, but it just 
didn't look like it was going to happen. So we made a very quick decision to to basically adapt and um, and decide to create a um, a streaming platform. Um, so what you're seeing is a very special selection of short films, um, but it's also a selection of films that give um, French people in Frank and a, on a larger francophone audience in Martinique, Guadeloupe, Guyane and La Mayotte, La Réunion as well, um, a sense of what that lived black experience is in Australia. So it's uh, a signature program, five short films. I love them all. They're all very different. There's female Indigenous Australian directors, there's male, there's contemporary film, and there's also a very special film which is um, directed by David Gulpalil Gul in 1973. And it's an extraordinary piece of cinema. I don't think we've seen anything like it in France. It's very... Um, it has a very strong style and there's hardly any dialogue in it. And it's David Gulpalil's vision of, of urbanism. Um, he made it... It's possibly, like, it's one of the first films directed by an Aboriginal filmmaker. So, historically speaking, it's an extremely important film as well. And just lastly, I'm sorry, we are running out of time. Uh, in your opinion, just how important is cinema as a tool in letting uh, Aboriginal voices uh, come to the fore, be heard? Well, I think it's an, an important tool for, for anybody from any country, really. Um, I think... Um, there's perhaps a tendency with Aboriginal culture to kind of exotify it and so whilst it is in the realm of the art world, um, voices, those voices aren't going to be heard. The creators' voices aren't going to be heard. So the big difference obviously is with cinema that um, there are narratives that are becoming audible and, and visible because for many, 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 many decades, the Aboriginal culture was very much negated in Australia. So this way we um, are creating a platform basically of visibility and the camera is a wonderful weapon for that, if I can call it that. But um, it's also a very creative um, tool and I think uh, First Nations filmmakers have extraordinary storytelling capabilities and extraordinary languages to tell those stories with. So there's a lot to discover and a lot to explore. Greta Morton Elange, I'm so sorry, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, Greta Morton Elange, director of the Black Australia Film Festival, based here in Paris. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder now of our top stories today. An outpouring of grief on the streets of Buenos Aires and around the world following the death of Argentina's golden boy, Diego Maradona, the legendary footballer passing away at the age of 60. And as the US sees its highest number of COVID-19 deaths in the last six months, authorities urge people to keep their Thanksgiving celebrations as small as possible. It's time now for 